Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a, a 2016 a Mini Cooper. Um, the problem we have is that the customer was driving the vehicle the other night and the check engine light lit up while they were driving um, and they felt a shake in the engine when they accelerated. Um, today they bring the car in, we're going to scan it, we're going to see what's going on and hopefully we're going to uh, we're going to be able to duplicate the problem. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take it for a test drive to see what it feels like. Okay, uh, took the car for a drive, uh, check engine light is not on and that shake is not there any longer. Um, so let's grab our scan tool, let's put it on there and uh, let's see what shows up. All right, um, you know what, let me just start this up and then let this run while we're, uh, while we're diagnosing it. Check engine light is not on. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to enter all the information into the scan tool. We'll, uh, we'll see what's going on with that. Okay, we do have one code in there. You know what? I grab my glasses. Um, okay, it says cylinder number four, not currently detected. So the, the misfire is not currently detected on number four. It is actually uh, okay. It's actually not misfiring right now. The check engine light is not on. So we're going to go back, we're going to go into the data stream, and we're going to see what we can see on the data stream. Okay, we're going to go to the misfire counter, just so we can, uh, so we can, we're going to go to the misfire counter so we can actually watch to see if there's any misfires taking place on that cylinder. We're just going to select the cylinders now to watch the misfires on, on, on all of the four cylinders. All right. okay, I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually showing no misfires on any of the cylinders right now. So I'm going to power break it to see if we can get to duplicate that problem. Boy, I'm not used to these small cars. Sometimes if you power break the car, you can actually get it to start misfiring. In this case, it's not misfiring. It's going to be a little difficult to pinpoint where the problem is now because it's not happening at this time. So, uh, all right, let's go underneath the hood. Let's take a look at the, the, uh, the coils up front to make sure there's no issues, and uh, then we'll to continue from there. Now, I just want to point this out to you. This car has extremely low mileage on it. It's only got about 37,000, 38,000 miles on here. They did talk to the dealer about this the other day, and the dealer told them that it was not covered by warranty any longer, that the warranty was over. 
So, uh, all right, let's take a look underneath the hood, and uh, we're going to figure out what's going on. I'm going to leave the car running, just so you know. So come on up front, and let's, uh, let's take a look at those coils. Okay, your ignition coils are actually down here underneath this cover, but we're going to need to take out this, this torch bit and this one here, and uh, then we pop these little clips right here up, like that. There should be four of them there. We're going to pop that up, and we're going to take that cover off. So, uh, all right, let's, uh, let's continue. Okay, first thing we're going to do now is we'll take out those, uh, those two uh, torch in the back here. Now, now being that the, uh, the, the problem is not present at this time, now if you had a scope, would be a good idea to get your scope out, connect your scope up to the individual coils, and we'll find out what's going on with it. But if you don't have a scope, let me show you what to do. Okay, well, the problem is not there at this time, which makes it a little bit difficult to pinpoint what it is. Um, I have a feeling it's going to be a bad ignition coil, so let me just call the customer, run it by her. We have two choices here what we can do. One, we can change the coil, or two, we can rotate the coil on number four cylinder to a different location, whether it's one, two, or three, and then let the customer take the car and drive it. If the misfire travels from cylinder number four to whatever cylinder you put it in, so we'll say three for instance. If you rotate that coil to number three, and now that misfire travels and it comes back tomorrow or the next day with a misfire in the number three cylinder, then we know absolutely positively that the coil is no good. But let me call up and get a price on the coil, and I'm gonna call the customer. I'm gonna tell the customer what's going on and we'll see what they wanna do. So uh, come on, you're gonna come along, we're gonna make a phone call together. I yeah, just wanted to point this out to you. I, I always check to see what uh, what's on the uh, what's TSB's technical service bulletins regarding any car, and this is what I came up with on this particular one. The check engine light is on. Um, misfire code is stored. Intermittent performance are rough running without any uh, relevant uh, failure stored. Most likely cause the ignition coil has failed, uh, which in many can. Okay, yeah, all right. So basically, what it's saying is that there's a problem with the ignition coil. Uh, high temperature. That's not the case. High temperature because it was only actually like 55 or 60 yesterday. Uh, determine the method. Of it. Okay. Okay. It says basically what it's saying is that the coils break down and deteriorate, leading to a failure or an intermittent failure. Um. Okay. All right. Let me make a phone call to the customer, and uh, we'll see what they want to do. Okay. Um, it's a wise choice by the owner uh, to go ahead and replace the coil. But as you as you heard, I did tell it this is going to be an ongoing problem, and it's probably a good idea at this point to change all four of them, which I would have did today. But they only have one of them in stock, and we can't get the other three until tomorrow anyway. So uh, all right, let's get out there. We're going to change that coil, and then we're going to take this car for a test drive and. Uh, Hopefully everything is well, so let's take a walk out there. Okay, the way it works is you lift this piece up right here, just like that, and you unplug your plug from the foil. Now we know number four foil is over here because it always starts number one, two, three, and four. The front of the engine by the fan belts is considered number one cylinder, all right, and this one is number four. So these coils come out a little bit differently, than the, uh, than the standard coil does. These just push... Sorry about that, it's a truck passing by. These just push right in, there's no screws holding them down. So you need to get underneath here with a, with a small little pry bar or a screwdriver or whatever you have just to, uh, to pop up the coil out of the valve cover. Now you want to be careful if you don't break it. Now once you push it up and it just starts to come out, you just pull it out just like that. Alright, so that is the ignition coil. So we're just waiting for the replacement to get here now. And then we'll put the new coil back in and we'll, uh, we'll get this car out the door. So, uh, alright, we wait for the new coil. 
Okay, here's our replacement. And it just pushes right down. And you'll feel, make sure that this little tab right here lines up with the tab in the valve cover right here as well. It just pushes down inside and you push it until you feel a snap in. Push your wire back on, lock it down, and that's it, you're all set. Let's just start this up. As you can see, no misfires. Now we'll put our cover back on. And the way the cover goes back on is it just lines up on the top. These little tabs here, they just have to push in. Now we'll put those two screws in. Now remember, you're screwing into plastic. Okay. Now let's go in the car, let's check our scanner and see what's happening. Alright, no diagnostic codes whatsoever now. So we're going to just do one more thing before we take this for a drive. We're going to go back into the data stream and we're going to make sure we have no misfires. I can feel it in the car. I know there's no misfires in it, but we're going to look anyway. And as you can see, there's no misfires. And everything looks good. All right, so we're going to uh, we're going to keep this on the vehicle. We're going to take it for a test drive, and we're going to make sure it's okay. Okay, that's it. All right, then being that the TSB is in the computer saying about all these failures with the ignition coils, I'm pretty confident this vehicle is going to be back within a short period of time to have the other three coils replaced, which, as you remember, I mentioned to her. So we will uh, you know deal with it as it happens or if it happens. As always, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.